Reverend Jones for that fervent prayer. Amen. We thank you for being here today. We thank all of you for being here today. You may be seated, officers, nurses, and nurses, unless I have you to stand too long. You may stand when I come to the passage of scripture we're going to and delve into today. God is an awesome God. And the good thing is that he still reigns. He still sits on his throne. And uh, we have to give him all the glory and all the praise due his holy name. Working with this passage, um, today that I'm going to deliver into your hearing or attempt to deliver into your hearing um, because this religion thing is a practice thing. Uh, we don't never really get it all together and we'll never get it all together. Um, someone saying the other day said I read a scripture and I read it three times and each time I got a different idea. I said that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit will do to you is that uh, you know do uh, you good because if you keep reading it He'll eventually give you what you need. Amen. Amen. And so when I was, um, well, I wasn't growing up, but the thing about it is I remember that uh, aforetime, about this time of year, all the kids that were uh, preteens and teenagers were in a uproar about Transformers. Uh, these were little, little toys that uh, they looked like a car. Uh, they might have been a high-rise truck, but when you unfolded them, uh, they became a big giant or a, um, um, it could have been a super creature. Uh, and they would walk around with them and you have to really look close uh, to see what there was, but they were called transformers. That, that's what I really want to talk to you about today as far as transforming because transforming is an action word. And so if you're going to transform, that means you start here and you end up looking a little differently when you first came. Now we'll pick up on that a little bit later. Christians transforming, there ought to be a difference down the road. From the first time that you met Jesus Christ to right now, there ought to be a great transition even on our thought and guess what, even in our duty. Um, and so we, we wanna, we wanna kind of work on this, uh, this, uh, this chapter of Romans 12 we want to go here this morning. We want to uh, endeavor. We're just going to work between verses 1 and 10. We're not going to go all the way to the end because there's such good stuff in here. Uh, but, but the two things that I want to pull out uh, of this, of this pericope, this story that Paul is giving uh, as he's leaving on his last journey, he says, he says, you've got not only doctrine, but guess what? you got some duty there. So I'm talking about doctrine and duty. I've already given you the title. That's what Paul is talking about today. And so signify by saying amen when you reach that passage of scripture. Amen. All right, it reads on this wise. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable. service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that is that good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say though, the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he right, ought to think, right, right. but to think soberly according right. as God has dealt to every man the measure of his faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of another, having the gifts of differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to pr proportion of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that extorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. That's, that's without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Verse 10 says, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor 
preferring one another. I'd like to talk to you from this thought. It's just our doctrine. It's just our duty. Amen. It's our doctrine. It's our duty. Paul is letting them know that since he saved you, since, since he died on an old rugged tree, since you've been going through the motion of learning what really brings salvation to a soul, then you need to be about your father's business. He, he, he says, he says, rather than just hear the word, um, the, you need to actually act upon the word. Now here, this is where the transformation comes in. A lot of us come in and we hear the word of God, but it doesn't move us. Uh, amen, lights. Uh, we hear the word of God, we enjoy the word of God, we hear the doctrine broken down, whether it be salvation or whether it be heartomology or whatever the case is, we hear it, but sometimes it does not affect us. Why? I'll give you this for free. Because the Holy Spirit does not move on all of us at the same time. It is around us all the time but it not, does not move, Sister says, in our hearts at the same time. And so that's why I'm, I'm kind of curious, not other than the choir, uh, I'm kind of curious when one somebody has to look at somebody else to start clapping, mm. to start rocking and rolling. Uh, see, because your stove don't work like my stove. <laughs> See, see, even though they have different degrees and you turn it up, it works a little bit different, Kenneth, uh -huh. than what somebody else. So sometimes when I turn mine up and it says medium, yours might be higher. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it, it boils at a different time. Let me break it down to you. Gas and electric works different. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you see, that's why a lot of older folk and good cooks know that when you turn the fire up on a gas stove, yes. it stops cooking. Uh -huh. But if you leave it on an electric stove, <laughs> It keeps cooking. That's why y'all burn up some stuff. I, I'm not the greatest cook in the world, but I'm just kind of letting you know how things go. And, and so the thing in mind is that, but Paul is talking about transfer. He says, you got the doctrine down right, man. You know that Christ died on an old rugged cross to save you. You know that he rose early that Sunday morning. You got that. But why are you not moving on it? And so that's what he's talking about here. He says, he says, I beseech you, brethren, that's everybody, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know what a living sacrifice is? We're living, but we're not sacrificing. We're living, we're not doing anything, we're just going through the motion. Paul says you ought to present your body as a living sacrifice. In other words, when you strike up a tomb, when you start praising God, when you come into his gates with thanksgiving on your heart, you ought to be a living sacrifice. In other words, God can use you for anything. But you know, we're careful about that. We, we try to be slick with God. We tell him, says, well, I'm on fire for you, Lord. Uh, I'm ready to do this for you, but, but not right now. Yeah, not right now. I, I don't have the time. You know, now we've, we, we've done it in college. We've done it through life, and some of us are doing it now. But he says you ought to present. Since, since you know how much it costs to buy your salvation, you ought to at least present your body. <laughs> you ought to dress the part. Amen. You, you at least ought to walk the part. Oh, yeah. Because our, our attitudes toward God, determines our altitude in our spiritual faith. You need to understand that our doctrine don't save us. It only informs us. But God dying on the cross and the blood streaming down is what transformed us and saved us. And so, so Paul is trying to get them and says, man, you need to get active. Rather than walking around that we know you're saved, all of us in here have been saved. He said, but you ought to have some works. Not, yeah. not to become saved, but you ought to work because you are saved. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 ought to, you ought to be willing to do something on God's program. He says, so he says, by the mercies of God, God is the one that created this thing. You see, if, if you got the doctrine right, I might know that all it takes is confession by mouth to say that I believe in Jesus Christ and that I'm saved. I got the doctrine down. Yeah, yeah. 
But what am I going to act like? When folk see me, am I acting like I know that I know that I've been saved? Do I really know what that doctrine is all about? Do, do I really know what, what, what Paul is trying to tell us? He says, you're saved, man, but you, but you ought to be transforming your mind. If, if you got a new body, then your mind ought to be new. Yeah, it ought to be new because you got a new walk. You got a new talk. I, I was listening, and he's one of my favorite singers. Uh, I know Brother Willie get him all the time, but John P. Key got a, he has a message in his music. And, and he was saying that he was strung out on cocaine. Yeah. He was in jail. Yeah. But only Christ mm -hmm. is the one who saved him. Yeah. Right. He, he made, he made an a acknowledgment of the doctrine that Jesus died for him. But the transition came when he started believing by faith yeah. and realized that I've got something I've got to give to the world. Uh -huh. yes. What are you giving back to the world? Hmm. Do, do you don't want to testify on your job? When someone asks you a question about religion, do, do, you might not know it, but say, hey, I'll, found, I'll find it out for you. Paul says, you at least ought to present yourself. Amen. If you're a Christian, you ought to look like a Christian. If you're a Christian, you ought to sound like a Christian. You ought to walk like a Christian. That there, is, there is a correlation between doctrine and duty. Once you know you know you've been saved, you have a duty. And he, he addresses that. We all don't have the same duty. Man, Brother Rivers can't sing. Now, he might sing at home. I might sing at home. You know, but he might sing enough to satisfy his wife. But the thing is, is that we know he's not up there in that choir. And I'm not in that choir because we can't sing. But the thing about it is that we ought to be, but he's over there thinking it. She's singing. I'm preaching. There is some place in God's house for you. We have urshers. We, we, have, we have deaconess. That, there is a place, and, and that's what he says. He, he says, you, you ought to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let, let me help you. Let me help you, Sister Gail. Let me fold it for you. See, if you say you've been saved, uh -huh. and you know you've been saved, uh -huh. He, he says, this is your reasonable service when you join up with a little ragtag band that you're going to pass out some business card for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know how we pass out business cards? Mm -hmm. It's by our walk. Yeah. It's by our faith in God. He said, that's just your reasonable service. A lot of folk, let, let me say this kind of quiet because I don't want to shock anybody. Since some folk think that reasonable service is to just pay that one ten. And come up and sit and do nothing. That's not your reasonable service. Your reasonable service is to take care of God's work before you get here. See, more work outside these walls than inside these walls. And so we, and we're not just talking about the neighbor next door that you're comfortable talking to. We're talking about somebody that, that challenges you on doctrine. Now, you don't have to argue with them. Paul says, I'm not going to argue with him, because guess what? We ought to be on the same page. We're all Christians. So if you're going to do it, it's just your reasonable service. I get this a lot. Have you gone to check on brother and sister so-and-so and so? -and -so? I I'm making my rounds. But do you know it's your reasonable duty to call and check on your brother and sister? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Sam, they look for the pastor to do it all. Your reasonable service. Right, right. We order stuff online, but we don't call our sick brothers and sisters. We text trash and little funny things all during the day. When we know someone is sick, just thought I'd interject that. He says your reasonable service. I'm going to move on with this. He, he says, and be not conformed to this world. Don't worry about what everybody is saying in the world. Yeah, you need to keep up with the news. But don't listen and believe everything you hear and see on the TV and on the Internet. That stuff is false. A lot of it is false. He says, don't be conformed to this world. And you know how we get the world because we start listening to the world and we start doing it just this Wednesday night our lesson was in Jeremiah 
and, and it was 11, and the thing is, is that they were conforming to the world. They were not listening to Jeremiah. They wouldn't listen to what God had to say. They wanted to do their own things. They wanted to go into idolatry worship. They wanted to, after all that God had done for them, yeah, yeah, yeah. they still were stiff-necked and did not want to listen. And so he says, he says that you need to renew your mind. Renew your mind. You know how we renew our mind? We think about God. Every day we get up, Lord, help me to walk uh, circumspectly in the way that you want me to do. Not that I'm perfect, Lord, because I might slip along the way. But if I slip, pick me up. But I think a lot of our problem is that we go to God. If it don't rock our boat, we're not worried about it. But guess what? What happens to others can happen to us. And so we need to be strong in the Lord. So he says, don't be conformed to this world. Child, you ought to do this. Stop listening to folk who don't go to church. Stop listening to folk who don't know Jesus Christ. Stop listening to folk who, who well, I ain't going to go down that road. But, but stop listening to folk who ain't got no man. <laughs> stop, stop listening to folk that tell you what to do. They'll mess you up. And so we have to understand, Paul says, if you're going to renew your mind, it's not by reading Life's Magazine. It's not by reading People's Magazine. It's by reading the Word of God. And so we have to renew our minds. So if we're going to renew our minds every day, that means that we ought to have a devotional period with God. If it ain't nothing but sitting up on the side of the bed and say, thank you, Jesus, for another day. Are you with me here? See, a lot of folk got the doctrine down. They know once saved, always, they got that down. But what they don't have down is that they have a reasonable duty to God. And that old stuff, that old, that old thing about I got a lot of time, you might not have that time. Pick up the paper and see, what it's, see what's in there. And it ain't just old folk. It's a lot of young folk too. It's a middle-aged folk. So we need to understand that while we have a chance, our reasonable service. Now let me help you with that too. Reasonable service don't mean taking over somebody what somebody else is doing. I would serve. But, but Sister Florence got what I want to do. And, and, and Sister Florence needs to sit down because she's been up there too long. See, I, I know how this stuff works. And, and see, if you had it from Sister Florence, you'd had it towed up already. Because everybody cannot be a leader. It's in here. He says, if you're going to be a leader, you've got to be a leader that's lovable, that understands. And sometimes leaders, even though they've been offended, don't say anything in return. Sometimes just for peace's sake, <laughs> you got to walk away with, with, a, with an arrow in your back. <laughs> Brother Hobson, you got to walk away. You, you, you cannot stop and argue with them, folks, because if you turn around and argue with them, they'll shoot you in the front of the <laughs> well, The best thing to do is keep on walking with that arrow in your back. He, he says reasonable service. And, and another thing, let me help you here. Reasonable service don't mean that everything going to be peaches and cream. Some folk going to hurt you. Church folk know how to hurt you. And so we need to understand it says the, 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 uh, the, all the armies in the world, when they're wounded, they bring them in and they patch them up and they get them ready for war. The Christian army, the only one that will kill you on the battlefield. If you're wounded, they'll leave you there. Paul says your reasonable service. You, you need to get in gear. People, time is winding up. And this stuff about playing church, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I was there. You know what? You can be here opening the doors all the time. It's dangerous to be in the church and not be alert. Remember Eutychus? When Paul was preaching, he, he went upstairs. and I'm pretty sure it was hot in that, Brother Paul. He went upstairs. And he sit on a ledge in a window. Mm -hmm. and, and you know how we gnawed off in church? <laughs> you know how we gnawed off in church? You act like I'm talking to myself. Uh, the is that he got a little sleepy and he fell out of the window. 
He's in church. Uh -huh. But he's not listening. And it's dangerous to be in church because when you're out on a ledge, you can fall. And sometimes, doctrinally, folk are on the edge. Don't be listening to all this wife stuff that you hear. You're going to be wealthy. God's got something for you. I remember my dad. He told me to always. You, you, that's, that's some junk. I don't care. I was telling Brother Terrell this morning, it's amazing how God works, and I'm almost through with this, how God works. The, the song says, and it went like that, it says, thank you, God, for all of the little crims and cringes and all of the things that devastate my life. I thank you for them because it made me stronger down the road. Yeah, you, you, you have to understand that Paul is trying to get us stronger for what's coming down the road. If you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, if God decides to use it, it doesn't surprise you. You need to understand, he says, a living sacrifice. So that means that if I'm going to praise God, I got to do it while I'm living. If I'm going to service God in the best way, I got to do it while I'm living. A living sacrifice. Uh, Isaiah says, who sh that God says, who shall I send? Who shall I call? Here I am, Lord. Send me. When you sign up, to be a Christian, you signing up forever. Yes, it ain't just a part-time thing. Yes, Paul says, since you know all of that, for, for that, 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 that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect to the will of God, do it unto the Lord. Yes. Not Pastor Lee, not Sister so-and-so, and so you need to do it if God is satisfied with you on what you're doing. If it don't lift up the name of Jesus, God is not going to be satisfied with it. If it doesn't help his fellow man, if you've done it to the least of one of them, guess what? You've done it unto me. Let me hurry to a close. It says, for I say, through the grace given unto me, through it, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly. <laughs> I think this is the meaning of the problem. We think we are better because we call ourselves Christian. Paul says it's a practicing thing. And, and I know that whenever I try to do good, <laughs> evil is always present. Every time I think about doing good, Satan is right there. But what I need to do is make a decision on my, how it's going to affect my relationship with God. Because sin, what? Separates. It's repugnant to God. And so we think about it, it's, it's odious to God. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't smell right in his nostrils when we sin, when we knowingly sin. And Paul says, is this through the grace, what, given to us? We didn't buy it. We don't own it. We didn't earn it. It was given to us by Jesus Christ dying on the old rugged cross. Don't you ever forget that, that you are bought with a price. You're not your own. And Paul says, since you're not your own, it's still reasonable for you to serve God. Who wouldn't serve a God who died on a cross for them? Who wouldn't serve a God who makes provision for them? Who wouldn't serve a God that wakes you up every morning? Who wouldn't serve a God that talks with you and walks with you and protects you? Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And he says, in all of that, the thank yous and the praise God and the hallelujahs, that's your reasonable yes. service. Yes. Yeah, you, you at least ought to do what's reasonable. Uh -huh. Yeah, some folks say, well, hey, you know, they demand a whole lot of stuff. Reasonable. Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it as unto the Lord. Uh -uh. He, sa he, says, he says, for as we, we have measures of faith. Look, look, look. Do it according to the measures of faith that God gives you. Yes. 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 Don't, don't try to do it on, on daddy's faith. Yes. Right, right. Do it on what faith God has yes. given you. Yes. Everybody don't have the same faith. Amen. Yeah, you might be of the same faith of a Baptist church, <laughs> but you don't have the same faith. Let something happen in your life. Some folk can handle it, and some can't.
You lose five or six members out of your life in a short period of time. And you still praising God. That's faith. And I've known some people right here in River City who just lost one person and couldn't exist. I know what I'm talking about. Faith, he says, if you're going to serve, serve with the portion of faith that God has given you. Don't try to go on Sister Carr's faith. You won't fall short. Go on what God has given you. And if you just have the faith the size of a mustard seed, that's a great start. Said so the mustard seed is real small. Now that might be genetically, we know that's not the smallest seed now, but at the time, known to the farmers, a mustard seed was the smallest seed. But Jesus paraphrasing says, it's a little bit of seed, but when it grows, the birds come and build that. God is telling you something. Faith is transitioning. It transitions. I started here, but I am over here. I started here. I was afraid of my own shadow. I was afraid of going out. I was afraid of death. But now, since I'm here, my faith looks up to thee. And it says that if I leave here, I have another house not made with hands in the heavens. And I'm not worried about it. I like that what they said. George Bush asked uh, 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 one of the uh, one of his uh, cabinet members, uh, uh, Baker, uh, the other day, and said he asked him as he's transitioning, uh-huh. as he's going from earth to glory. He asked him. He says, Baker, where are we going? He said, We're going to heaven. He said, That's where I want to go. That's what I'm talking about. Faith. Uh, do what you do in your reasonable service. And when you've done what you could, while you could, while you were able to do it, guess what? You don't have to look back over your life and say, God, did I do my reasonable service? Yeah! Come on up here. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Are you with me? There is a correlation between doctrine and duty, but we just don't dwell on the doctrine. We've got to add them together. They go hand in hand. Once I know better, i got to do better. Once I understand your word, it is just not for input and information. It's to go out and transform it into my life. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ending up. I'm going to give you these, these, these quick points right here, and I'm going to be through with it. He, he says, he says, Paul discussed in his closing your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Are you united with Christ that he is your all in all? He is your number one. Hashtag number one. Yeah, yeah. You've got God. This is how you got it. He says, you, you, you've got God. You've got others. You've got yourself. And then you got duty. Which one are you leaving out? All of it is our reasonable service. And so we need to understand, Paul says, your relationship with God determines what you're going to think and what you're going to do. If you don't have a close relationship with God, you're not going to work for him. If you don't love God, you're not going to work for him. Right. And so the thing about it is, how is your, Paul says, your, number one, your relationship ought to be right with Christ. And if your relationship is right, and you look, Sister Susan, at what he's done for you, you can't help but want to do something for him. Yeah. And all he asks for us to do is be his arms and his legs. Yes. That we service other folk. Yes. That we love our brothers. Be kind to one another. Don't be hypocritical in what you say. Yeah. Whatever you say, if you don't mind repeating it. That's why I tell somebody, say, oh, you gossiping right now, Pastor. I said, no, no, no. What I'm telling you, I'll say again and aloud. Our our state president, he asked me, and and I'm closing. He says, one thing I like about you, he says, you told me you were going to support me. And we all went to to, uh, Fort Worth to help him get installed. He says, you told me openly that you were going to support me. He said, when you got here, you did exactly what you said you were going to do. And he says, not only that, you sent a letter ahead stating what you're going to do. You know why he's mentioning that? Because a lot of them that said they were going to vote for him turned their back on him at the last hour. You ought to have a word with God. 
your service and your relationship ought to go hand in hand. You, go, you gotta watch them folk. I love the Lord. I, I heard his cry. I pitied every moan and go out there and curse you out. The next day. I ain't been on this battlefield a long time, but I've been on here long enough to know how it works. I've heard folk curse right in this church. <laughs> and there have been some fights along the way, too. Paul says, your reasonable, can, can I stress, you, you ought to transform when you first met the Lord. You ought not be in the same place. Thank you, Sister Shirley, for helping me with it tonight. Sister Shirley says that, uh, you know, we ought to have a relationship with God that we wrestle with him all the time. And uh, we were talking about how our knees was hurting and how we were limping. And she says, Pastor, she said, I wrestled with an angel last night. Now, some of you will get that on the way home. <laughs> Jacob wrestled with an angel until it was daybreak. And then the angel touched the hollow of his thigh. And Jacob walked with a limp. So when y'all see me limping, just say he might have. Wrestle with an angel all night long. This is our reasonable service. This, this is what we should do. Guess what? Reasonable service means oh, nobody orders have to ask me to serve. Now you better get somebody else. I'm not used to doing that. Some of us are so pristine. You know how baby is when they don't, especially the girls, they don't like to get their hands dirty. Have you ever noticed babies? Go back, go back and think about it. Little girls don't like to get boys, they they they'll they'll go to the toilet, stick their hands in it, <laughs> play in it. Little girls, even from small, they're they, and some of us are Christians like that. We don't want to touch anything that we feel is gonna dirty us up. We're here to serve. And he says that we ought not be hypocritical in our service. If we say we're going to do it, we ought to do it. Now, here's the kicker. If you can't do it, you ought to call somebody and tell them, hey, I promised that I could do it. But guess what? I couldn't. And guess what? I'm going to see if I can help you find somebody else. You need to understand that Paul is talking to us. He says, he says number one, number two, you need to be right with yourself. <laughs> I talk to myself. Uh, now, we, we, we ain't talking about listening to your gut. We're talking about listening to yourself, the spiritual inner self. You need to understand that self will tell you don't do that. That's conscience. God put it in there for a reason. Don't touch that. Don't do that. He said, then you ought to have a good relationship with the church. And this is what I'm going to close on. I have been here for a while now, and it is an, an atrocity for someone to die now and have no way to be buried. And know where to go to be buried. Amen. The family's got to sit back and beg a church or pay for a church to have your funeral. Amen. We spend more money on junk that we can get a policy that can bury us. I'm not talking about the engineer, I'm talking about us. We, we, we can buy $85,000 cars. And, and pick up on this. It's not that it's our reasonable duty to take care. But you know what? We need to start working on folk. You need to start thinking about what time you're going to check out. $13 to $27 a, 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 a day is nothing to pay for a policy. I'm talking some good stuff. Talking about death don't kill you. You, if, if you don't have the money in the bank to put yourself away, you need to get busy. In fact, which prompting me, as I close, to bring in Sister Lois, you were there when, they, you, when we was in Beaumont, there was a couple of ladies who had insurance policies that the family could get together. You know if Junior is running raggedy and he's not taking care of himself, you need to start taking care of Junior so it won't come back on you later in life. Am I making any sense? Yeah. We're talking about reasonable duties. Yeah. We should have a relationship with the church. Yeah. You ought to have a church you can call a church on. Don't be coming back in here 20 years talking about, uh, yeah, I'm still a member of Bell's Island. And that has happened. Yeah. Been gone 20 years to California and get up and talking about, well, I was here when Reverend Dunn was here. Man, come on, please. <laughs> you know, member. 
But some folk think that once they come in and sit for Sunday, they are members. And so, so you ought to have a relationship with your church. Like one guy came in here one day and he says, I want to greet my pastor. And he kept pointing at me. He was doing a funeral. He's pointing at me, my pastor. And they said, is this my pastor Lee? And after church, they asked me, say, when was he here? I say, back in 66, 67. <laughs> but he still think he's a member here. Come on, people. Paul says you ought to have a relationship with your church, not a bad relationship. Because you don't want somebody to look down the road by the car and say, uh-oh, here he come. <laughs> here she come. You want to have a good relationship with your church. And, and don't look at me like a deer looking at a new gate. The thing about it is that we got some folk who will just test your nerve in the church. The relationship they have is to, is to tick you off. <laughs> I guess I'm talking to myself. Let me go on and say <laughs> He says, you need to understand even Paul addresses how we treat our enemies. That you got to love them. You can't just throw them away. If we are part of Christ, Christ died for everybody. Even the scoundrels, he died for everybody. He's died for sinners all over and we are the chief of the sinners. And then he says, not only that, when you're reasonable service in the church, you ought to have a reasonable service with government. Amen. To me, I said vote. Yes, That's how we can participate in the government. Yeah. Yeah. Electing folk who are looking out for you and me. Yeah. And who's not trying to take your health care away. Yeah. And who's not trying to say ketchup is a food. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. That, that applesauce really? is a choice of vegetable. Yeah. You, you, you can't study on, you, you try to eat an applesauce and, and, and ketchup and stuff and try to go and work on a job, you'll fall out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like brother, 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 brother Mac down there, you gotta have some real sticking child yeah. if you intend to do some business. And it's the same thing with God. If you're not committed, you won't be transformed. And if you don't be transformed, you're going to neglect your duty. Our duty is that we need to understand that all of us united, many members but just one body, we all have the same goal, but our ministries are different. But guess what? They all gonna meet up together on that great getting up morning. We have something to do. It, it, isn't it, wouldn't it be good to, when God call you and say, oh, I see Sister Sia, she's been on the battlefield for a long. So good to see you. Hey, Lee, you, you, you did some good things. You did some bad things, but you did some good things. But it's, it's, it's good to have you here. Yes, yes. Young people, get busy. Start working in God's house. Your reasonable service. He says, if you present it, guess what? I'll do the rest of it. But we've got to come and present it. Amen? God be the glory for all the good things that he's done. Come on, brother. Extend the privilege of the church.